you're a busy guy. You're out there filming movies here. Uh, what made you get involved with this new venture? I uh, just trying to to use my platform in a helpful manner, I suppose. Uh, trying to create engagement, trying to get people more uh, comfortable with the world of politics. I think we don't have nearly enough uh, interaction uh, in, in our country with with the political process, and I think part of that is because it's an overwhelming landscape. I think the idea of the site is a noble one. You guys are coming up with some questions that I think we all have, we might not be clear about, and you're putting them to our leaders in Washington and giving them a platform to speak directly to us. I know you launched in July. Mark, what, if, what are your numbers like? And I'd love to know how many folks have registered to vote through your platform, because I know that's one of your main objectives. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. We've had in about, I guess, three months, about 300 million, 330 million engagements uh, over across uh, all of our content. Um, we've registered over 10,000 people to vote. Uh, you can also contact your rep directly. Over 100,000 people have contacted their rep through our site that we know of. The folks that choose to go and you know look up information on their on our site, go elsewhere and continue on. We don't we don't track, but directly through our site, about 330 million uh, engagements, and then you know 100 or so thousand people have contacted their rep. Joe, I've been watching a lot of these videos. Uh, really, uh, this is really great work. I do think you guys are onto something here. Uh, what has it been like? How do you how have you been getting some of these interviews? I imagine uh, you have to win over the trust of lawmakers. Yeah, I I think that's been uh, critical. And I think at the beginning it was a little hard because they did not know what our intentions might be, especially uh, the worry that you know what if this is just uh, something we're in and out of, uh, we're not serious about. But secondly, given some of the ways we individually uh, lean. I think there was a worry that we might be biasing uh, what we're presenting. And it, it, it didn't take long, but they quickly realized that, no, we're going to lay the a framework for both parties to speak on the same issues and let people decide uh, which way they think uh, is the right way. I want to bounce off that because um, this is being billed as a nonpartisan uh, civic engagement site. And Chris, I know that you've been pretty vocal on, on Twitter and elsewhere about your um, dislike of President Trump and his administration. So how do you sort of reconcile, you know, your personal politics with your involvement in a starting point? Sure. Uh, by, by being transparent about it, by owning that, by acknowledging it and not pretending that I don't have personal opinions, but that the goal of this site is to prioritize engagement. And in order, in order to do that, you have to remove your personal opinions. And and, and if, if, if the end game is to try and let politics work the way we hope it all could, uh, it, it's about not injecting my personal opinions and, and letting elected officials communicate their beliefs to their constituents and then letting American people make their own decisions. Mark, are you getting any indications from all the politicians you do talk to that this polarization we've seen arguably for, what, eight to 10 years, is this is it going to stop? Does it get any, is it going to get better at any point? Well, I don't know if we can get an indication, but they all tell us they want it to, and they all have different opinions. In fact, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the questions that we asked pretty much everybody in the first three years when we were going to D.C. over two and a half years was what we, could we do to improve or what could they do to improve uh, bipartisanship? And all of them had opinions. And most of them had to do with empathy and finding ways to communicate individually. Uh, a lot of them critiqued the media in stoking a conversation uh, about divisiveness and not talking about the things that they were trying to do, whether that's you know the actual issue or not, who's to say. But they seem to all want to find ways to at least herald what they were trying to do. A, a really interesting example, actually, was we had a counterpoint, which is our version of a debate or a conversation around an issue between uh, Dave uh, McKinley, who's a Republican from West Virginia, and Kurt Schrader, who's a Democrat from Oregon, on uh, environment. One's from a coal uh, area and one's from an area with uh, wildfires. And they both had opinions about what was causing those and if we should or should not be in the Paris Accord, but they really wanted to focus on how they could work together to find a way to balance um, not losing jobs in the fossil fuel industry while bringing up technology in our country. And so they really are trying to find ways to deal with that. And they spend a lot of time on our site talking about that. You know, Joe, uh, you've been a lot of around a lot of big tech companies. You've got companies like Google and Facebook um, struggling with reining in misinformation on their sites, especially as it relates to the election. How do you tackle that at, at a starting point? Do you feel a responsibility at all um, to have to to have to rein in this misinformation? 
We do. We do. And we are sensitive to not just let anyone say whatever they want to say on the site uh, uh, if it's untrue. If it's true, they, they're welcome to it. So we do uh, some level of fact checking. We don't do it ourselves. We have another group who does it for us. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the facts should be the facts and people should have different viewpoints of them. But uh, we don't want people to, uh, to portray things that are not true. But also, if I could speak to that, you know, the disinformation that you talk about comes from other folks infiltrating the mechanism. Our mechanism is closed. The contributors are elected officials. So they're very easy to track down. So there's not really a room for someone. We don't have likes or dislikes on our site. We don't have message boards on our site. So there's not really a way for someone to galvanize a, a base for or against or sway what people are actually saying. If you don't like what they're saying, you know exactly who's saying it. Yeah, well said. Chris, uh, now as you've gotten to know some of these politicians and, and talk with them, are you surprised that we still have no stimulus plan? Yeah. Um, no, because again, to inject a little bit of my personal opinion, we have someone in the White House whose main goal is to create division. Uh, so so uh, I'm not surprised that we can't find commonality, and, and that's what this site is hoping to rage against. Chris, since we have you, we've got to talk about the state of Hollywood during this pandemic came to a grinding halt, as many industries did, starting to come back now. Uh, what have things been like uh, working in Hollywood during this pandemic? What's it been like for you? Slow. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's it's tricky. I mean, everyone's everyone's kind of on pause right now. And um, I will say the you know, Hollywood is is slowly making steps in the right direction of going back to work. I have a few friends who are in productions right now, and there's a lot of overhead trying to make sure that they can uh, work safely during this time. Um, but, but you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, it's not too much longer before things can get back to normal, at least, at least within, um, at least within my industry, I suppose. I mean, I know everyone's in for a lot of challenges, which is a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, and we all need the distractions. We want you guys to go out there and make these movies and these TV shows. I read that you're going to be in Little Shop of Horrors, the remake of it. Can you share anything about that with us? Yeah, The Dentist. God, boy, that's, that's so exciting. I was so, I'm thrilled to, to be a part of that. Uh, again, this is all, it's, it's one more job that's kind of uh, um, up in the air right now because I think a lot of people have a lot, of, a lot on their plate. Uh, so, so hopefully that goes next year, sometime in the summer, um, and, and I really can't wait. Chris, are you still bullish on movie theaters? Uh, really, they continue to close down, but uh, it's such a key avenue for, for the Hollywood industry. Yeah, wouldn't that be a heartbreaker if that goes away? Um, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, again, I, I'm I'm ever sanguine that that things will um, equalize and, and get back to some sort of recognizability. Um, I don't know how and I don't know when, but but I'm hopeful. But right, you know what? I'm really curious. Oh, I just gotta ask you guys, is this a for-profit venture? And how do you make money if it is? Now that's a good we'll question. Let you know how I, make money. <laughs> I get for profit you have to take in money, I think. I mean, Joe has more experience with this than, than we probably do. Uh, uh, we haven't quite worked that piece out, but we intend to. I mean, you know, uh, we really drilled down on making sure we had a mechanism that could deal with things that go on like you know, the Supreme Court hearings and be relevant to elected officials and and make sure that people wanted to pay attention to us. If that happens, if we're relevant, then eventually we'll find a way to uh, work with uh, probably either other media organizations or uh, other financial institutions to grow, which we'll eventually need to do if this continues yeah. to grow, uh, because we can only handle so much. And as Chris just said, we will get back to doing movies eventually, and then we'll need to actually find ways to support ourselves and have other people help work on this.